All right, Ratnam Sun, Ratnam Sun, Ratnam and Sons, whatever, here it is. Big brown Evanite eyedropper. Okay, there it is. Great big nib. Um, great big cap, great big pen. All right, so big it doesn't even fit on camera. There we go. <clears throat> it's a really nice pen. It's big, it's comfortable. Uh, yeah, and there it is. And then you go to take it apart. It takes all day, but that's good because it's an eyedropper for it's supposed to be. Ah, uh, but I glued in a piston converter. All right, I had to cut the end of the handle off. See how it doesn't really have an end of the knob to fit inside the barrel. Because right there, that's as deep as the barrel goes. Uh, the end of it's just dead weight, I suppose. Anyway, um, the thing about this is, and here's the box it came in. Ta da! Nice box. Here's the other one. The thing about it is, thinking, hey, they're the same pen, you know, they're made by the same company. They'll both. Parts are interchangeable, right? That's what I thought. Uh, here, let me show you this one. It's pretty smooth all the way around, right? This one, I can put this one without the section in there. Thing I don't like about it. Right there, this whole half of the barrel is like a huge lip overhang. You can't see it on camera, but yeah. Here it's nice and smooth, and it gets it's like a 32nd of an inch probably overhang there and nothing over here okay so the thing about it that surprised me is the uh, the caps are not exactly and there's that resistance I was talking about and this cap fits this body much better mm -hmm. but look at this wobble look at that not as nice as it should be that's a, it's better than what it was it was looser than that when I got it and then is my memory that bad? Yeah, look at that. Doesn't fit at all. Okay, that's kind of cool, huh? And then, let's say you want... It's just... It doesn't matter because who the hell is going to buy a daggum Indian eyedropper and swap parts? No one is. No one on this planet is. It just doesn't... Doesn't fit. So they're uh, definitely handmade, they're unique, they're individual. One works for one, but not for the other. Um, which, you know, whatever, that's cool. Uh, so, I mean, this one, maybe this one's more finished than this one because the threads here are shinier than on that one. So, um, I don't know. There you go, though. That's, uh, that's how, she, how she works. But I mean, it's it's a very nice pen. It feels good in the hand. Uh, and if there's too much of a gap between the feet and the nib, you just heat it up with a hot air gun and <coughs> squish it in there, burn your thumb, stick it in some cold blue inky soaking water, stick it in there, whoosh, and burn your thumb. Ow, it hurts. But anyways. But yeah, so there you are. Two pens. They're supposed to be the same. They're pretty different. But they're, you know, by themselves they're very nice. Uh, size comparison, in case you were curious. With the Mont Blanc 149, this is one I have on loan to me from a friend. Uh, nice, right? Spend all day 
be taking that thing off. Alright, so there's a two. Let me sort of see. There we go. And then nib size comparison. I would say that they are very nearly the same length. The Mont Blanc nib's a little skinnier, much prettier. It writes better, obviously. But, uh, man, this thing for being, you know, a whopping $60 pin, $65 pin, something like that, it's, uh, it's stinking nice. Feels good in the hand. So there you have it. And another thing is, it kind of—it's not even a big deal, but it's kind of wobbly. I don't know, maybe it's not a big deal. Kind of as annoying. Maybe I'm being nitpicky. All right.